will call the meeting to order at 6.01. And uh, welcome, Maya. Thanks for uh, joining us and becoming our, our note minute taker. Uh, really going to be helpful. Um, it's really challenging to be the person that's trying to participate in a meeting and take notes. So this gives us all the opportunity to be focused on the content and um, while you're doing the minutes. So thank you. Um, and at the risk of sounding like I'm telling you how to do your job, I'm going to tell you how to do your job. <laughs> um, we just want to make sure that, um, you know, each topic we cover, that there's some some record of that, you know, what the topic was, um, briefly describe um, the discussion. This isn't a, a transcript, which I know you know that, but this isn't a transcript of our meeting. But then if there is a decision that's made, that that is recorded. And, and also it's helpful to have a rationale for us when we go back and look at our notes and say, why did we decide that? Some rationale briefly. And then if we assign or have action items that we record those as well on a topic. So um, I'm sure you're experienced at this and you know, we'll, we'll um, you know, I'll learn as we go along and uh, see what we get. Um, now this is uh, what we're hoping to um, uh, get more efficient at getting our notes out to, to the community members, to the public in the five days it's required um, under the Vermont Open Meeting Law. So it's gonna be great to have you do this. Um, Sandy is going to do a quick review after you do the minutes, and then she'll get them to the town clerk for uploading on the website within five days of, of our meeting. Um, so we'll meet that obligation, that requirement from um, uh, Vermont Open Meeting Law. So I'm looking forward to, to this and cleaning this up. And but also I want to thank Julie and Christine and Sandy for the effort and trying to get you know our notes in the past. Uh, it's not it's not easy with any, everyone's busy schedule, so thank you all for that. Um, also, um, at each meeting, I want to want to just welcome the community members and also introduce ourselves to the community members. They don't always know who we are uh, when we're sitting up there around the table, so just quickly go around the table and um, tell folks our, our names. So I'm uh, Dan McKinley. I'm the chair of the uh, Planning Zoning Commission. I'm Sandy Haas. Julie Martin. Dave Curtis. I'm June Hendricks. I'm Sarah Raid. I'm a senior planner with Two Riverside Creature Regional Commission. Great. Thank you all. I'd like to make a make a habit of that, just so folks that don't know us all at least can put a name to our to our faces. Um, I want to remind everyone that our meetings are recorded because we do them in a hybrid fashion, both Zoom and in person. So we are recording our Zoom meeting, but I also see that Orca is with us tonight and they also will be recording our meeting. Um, so we're getting double, double duty. Um, also in these hybrid meetings, just so that we everyone gets an opportunity and a fair chance to, to speak, um, let's uh, make sure we raise our hands when we want to be recognized to speak. And if you're in Zoom world, um, use the reactions button at the bottom of your screen, a little button that says reactions. Click on that and there are a number of things. You can do a cry reaction if you like, um, or a raise your hand reaction, okay? Um, just so everyone knows and we'll... Um, Call on folks as we as we see those those hands raised, and um, it's difficult for me in Zoom world to see everyone on the owl. So, um, you know, like I, right now, I can't see uh, David and Julie or Dune. So, um, you guys but help me. If we me talk, out. then the owl um, highlights us. Is that correct? I think that's how it's supposed yes, to work. There yes. you go. Right. Right. So it highlights, so you have to talk before your right hand is raised, but that's all right. Yeah. So we'll make, we'll yeah. make do and we'll be courteous um, with each other and uh, do the best we can. Um, <clears throat> let's see, also we'll see, um, I'm gonna go through the agenda right here, um, right now and um, talk a little bit about another topic. So uh, we had a call to order. First part of the agenda is permit inquiries. If there are any, um, folks that come with specific questions about permits, um, we'll hear them first. Um, then we'll approve our minutes each month. Uh, this month we are doing August, September, October, and November. Um, uh, we also have again postponed the Barbara Hart minor subdivision application. 
After that, we'll have the administrative officer report, uh, building and zoning applications, uh, discussions of our bylaw update with Sarah is here to help, help us with, and then we'll have public comment. And you'll see in the agenda that we have um, limited public comment to three minutes. And that is uh, an effort to um, just give everyone a fair chance to, to speak and um, to not uh, sort of monopolize um, anyone's time and to respect each one of our, our, our time, those that are volunteering on the board, as well as those who um, attend the meeting community members. Um, so you'll have three minutes to speak. Um, you can say a lot in three minutes. If there is um, a, a, a back and forth uh, of a discussion of an item, then you can speak for three minutes a second time if you'd like. Um, uh, and that'll just uh, keep us moving along. We've got a, a, a full agenda and get us home at a reasonable hour. Um, and then we will adjourn. So um, without further ado, um, uh, are there any permit inquiries um, in the room? Probably not. We, we have no guests in the room. <laughs> okay, right. No one's asking for a permit. So um, we'll move on from here. I'm hearing a little bell in mind. Does that mean someone's that's in the a, That's June's phone, phone, and he just left the room. Gotcha. Okay. Oh, that's the other thing I wanted to wanted to mention is that. Um, the other thing I wanted to mention is if um, you know, we do on occasion use our cell phones in the um, planning commission um, meetings, and that is primarily well, always just to do research to answer questions. Sometimes we look up statutes, sometimes we uh, look up how to spell a word, um, but that is how we use our cell phones. And we would refrain from doing any sort of texting back and forth about the topics of the meeting. Um, so without further ado, we will move to approval of the minutes. Let's start with August. I move approval as circulated last week. I second it. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Um, ayes have it. August is approved. Um, uh, September minutes. I move approval as circulated last week. I second it. All in favor? Aye. 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 That was unanimous. I think I heard you there, David, didn't I? Yep. Uh, yes. Yep. Correct. All right, moving on to October minutes. I move approval as circulated last week. I second it. All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Unanimous. And lastly, our November, um, last month's um, minutes. I move approval as circulated last month. I second it. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Excellent. We're caught up and we will endeavor to get our December minutes up on, um, on our website um, within five days and probably before that, um, if things go smoothly. Thank you. Um, so Barbara DeHart is not here for her minor subdivision. We've postponed that. Um, so we'll move to administrative officer report. Um, any building zoning applications on yep, the board? I, I have two. I have um, one from Robert Steventon at 533 Mount Cushman Road in Rochester. And he is looking for a permit, a uh, new construction for an outbuilding, uh, a storage shed that would be behind his house. And so it doesn't require any new driveway cuts or, or um, septic and it meets the setback. So I approve that one. Hey, do let me. Again? Yep. Um, that's 533 Mount Cushman. In Dan? Yep. Yeah, I just want to check in with Maya on um, what she's going to record for those because those are recorded in the in the notes. Yep. Um, basically, just the uh, the applicant name, the address, what they're applying for, and if it was approved. Great, thanks, you Maya. All that you got yeah. it. Okay, cool. Excellent. Um, and then the second one, which would um, be pending, but it's. Um, um, looks like it would be approvable um, with the septic connection. This is from um, 
I guess it's um, Dave and Patty from Hawk North. Um, the owner is Marvin Harvey, and this is at um, the property address. I don't think it has a number. It's on School Street. It's the little red barn that's um, behind the hardware store that used to be Rhoda's um, antique store. And um, Dave and Patty are looking at a change of use, change it from storage slash retail to um, they want to put an apartment in there. So currently that building does not have any water connections. So I've talked with Terry Severy and he's going to inquire with Dubois and King about the, um, the feasibility of, of adding another service to that, that um, septic site. So that is, um, it's um, tentatively approved, but pending the um, approval of the septic connection. And water. And water, right, septic and water, right. And that's all I got for tonight. So that's basically on hold. It's moment. on hold, yeah. But I did um, talk to Terry, Every he's going to um, get on the, because part of this application is also an application for the municipal water and sewer permit, which would be something that he signs off on. So. Looks for Marvin Harvey, but. Um, Dave and Patty made the right. application, but Marvin owns the property. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions for Dune on that? Okay, thanks, Dune. All right, next on the agenda is our continued effort at our um, updating, revising of our um, zoning regulations. Uh, we've been working on this for um, a few months now with Sarah. Um, we had some homework to do on this. Um, Sarah had highlighted in her um, notes the things that we were going to focus on tonight. Um, so, um, Sarah, do you, how do you want to, I guess whenever you think it's appropriate and have some content to share, you can share your screen. Um, Thank you. And, Thank you, that'd be great. Um, could you make me a co-host, please? I'm not allowed to share my oh, screen. Oh, I don't know how to do that. Oh, okay. But you can teach, teach, yes. you can teach me. Absolutely, I do. <laughs> And that will give me screen sharing ability. Um, I'll try to keep an eye on dying. Normally, it allows you to get co host so that you can share that responsibility, which is a bit odd. Um, hello, everybody. Again, my name is Sarah Rate. For those who don't know me, I work as a senior planner with the Rosetta Coochie Regional Commission. If you can't hear me, I do apologize for the mask. Um, I need to take precautions for family. Just give me a shout or a wave and I'll, I'll try to talk more loudly. Um, I'm going to share my screen in a moment here. But before we dive into the actual meat of the ordinance work that we've been discussing, I wanted to follow up on a conversation that we had at the last meeting um, in reference to questions about using legal trails as driveways um, for use by cars. Is that still an open question before the commission? Is that still something that you all are working on? Yeah, it's more of a question in front of the select board than the planning okay. commission, but any input that you have would be great. Awesome. So. I had an opportunity to sit down with um, almost all of our senior staff this week and chat about it. Um, and they had some really helpful insights that I just wanted to pass along. Um, so we all did a little bit of research and it looks like the town is not legally obligated to allow a resident use of a town trail as a driveway if they have other frontage. Um, to that lot. And in the case uh, that you shared with me, you shared with me a map of a particular, particular lot. Um, that lot has frontage on Route 100. So you, you don't have a formal legal obligation to grant them use of that 
trail as a driveway. If there was no other frontage, then you might be in a different situation. But for this particular case, you don't have that legal obligation. Um, from a legal standpoint, you should be allowed to grant the use of a legal trail as a driveway. Um, that said, it's not advisable. And then all of this and your staff are sort of in unanimous agreement on this front is that, um, first of all, if, if you were gonna go down that road, if you were gonna start allowing people to use legal trails as driveways, you would really wanna establish some clear rules and regulations um, and expectations in policy, in town policy um, and, and bylaw language around that. But just from a sort of principle standpoint, it's not a good idea because as the years wear on, it's very likely that more people besides the owner are gonna start using that legal trail for cars. And so you're gonna probably see hunters moving up there, going up there, and, and you're gonna see, for example, glampers using that particular um, trail as a driveway. And it's very possible once you get into the 20 years on range that they're gonna have legal standing by dint of use of longstanding use to force the town to make that into a, a proper road. And so it just puts the town in a position that you might not necessarily want to put yourselves in. <laughs> that might be that might be stepping too far. Maybe you want to go that road. And if that's cool with you, then go ahead and set clear policies and expectations around who's paying for what and under what time frames and all that sort of stuff. Um, so that's sort of our our gloss here on that. And in terms of like the actual block, the actual parcel that you had um, sent us the map of, um, just from Two Rivers perspective, we wanted to point out that, you know, we see that the topography on Route 100, trying to get, use the frontage on Route 100 is inhibited by the topography. Um, your bylaws language is broad enough. It says that you have to have frontage on a lot, but it doesn't say you have to use that particular frontage on a lot. So, you know, you can certainly develop that lot without actually using the Route 100 frontage, at least as far as we're reading it, we're reading your bylaw. Um, and what we're looking at in terms of like possible access to the lot, we can see that the, the Jerusalem Hill Road would be the most logical option to enter into that, to, get, to give access to that lot. And the sort of solution that we would recommend if you wanted, if the, you and the landowner wanted to go that route would be to convert the portion of the legal trail um, that sort of leads between the end of Jerusalem Hill Road and the lot line into a class four road. If you make that conversion, you are not obligated to improve the road um, in any way, but it's just a sort of a process that you go with with VTrans, right? It's a discussion with VTrans, you make that happen. Um, and that would give you frontage to the lot line. And then what we would recommend, our office would recommend would be to require the landowner to put in a driveway which is separate from the legal trail to wherever they want to build on the lot. From the lot line. Um, yeah, from the lot line. Um, it's also possible that the landowner could um, if they wanted a different access point, we saw that there might be some potential access points from roads um, towards the northeast. They could purchase a right away from an adjacent property owner from the property, or excuse me, from the road to their lot line and then build a road, right, to, to give themselves frontage. Um, but it does seem like the Jerusalem Hill option and that conversion might be the easiest uh, route from point A to point B. Um, so that's, yeah, I just wanted to share that information. I hope that's helpful. Um, we, had a, we had a nice chat about it this week. And that's the different options. Should we Thank dive you, into Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. bylaw stuff now? Does that help them? Yeah. Good. Yeah. Well, I mean, they went the route they went because obviously the easiest way was the legal trailway, but I mean, fucking okay. paper wise. <laughs> okay. So let's dive into um, the bylaw then. I wanted to start off with river corridor regulations, which we've had some discussion about um, prior to this meeting. 
And so the question before the um, commission right now is whether the town is interested in pursuing river corridor regulations. Um, the So what I've, what I've got here on the screen is a map of, it's, it's available through Two Rivers website. If you go to programs, mapping, and then look for flood and river corridors, um, you'll be able to find this map. And it basically just shows you the floodways, the floodplains, and the river corridors, also the um, small streams that have been mapped for our region. Um, just trying to get my bearings here. And I'll zoom into the town if that's helpful. Um, and for those of you who are unfamiliar with the conversation that ha has happened so far, I'm struggling. There we go. Um, my apologies. Jog on the corner. There we go. My apologies. Thank you for your patience. As I so all the blue lines are straight. Yeah. That's correct. Um, so the river corridor is a um, shade. It's it's a shaded orange. So it's effectively this orange band that you see there. Um, It goes up to there, I believe. So this this particular so not the crosshatch section, but that narrow orange band. I believe so. I'm trying to get a view where I can show you some layers. And I'm particularly others. interested in seeing the high school. Well, I see the high school. Right through right the middle through of it. it. Go right through the middle of it. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. um, uh, there we go. Okay. So I'm going to keep this visible and I'm going to remove all of the others. Hello. So sorry. Okay. So this is just showing you the river corridor. As you can see, that, that's the high school. Um, I am also supporting the high school repurposing project team, and we've had some conversations about, um, you know, the question of whether regulating the river quarters would impact the high school project. Um, and honestly, you know, if they're not going to change the footprint of the building, and it sounds like that's not in the cards for them, um, then it's really not going to impact your decision really isn't going to impact them because what the river corridor regulation does as you've seen from the materials that were sort of the standard language that's provided by the state um, is that it basically says you can't build any closer to the river than existing development the buildings that are already there so from the perspective of the high school repurposing project i don't think that's going to be a concern for those of you who are not familiar with the river corridor discussion, I just wanted to give a little bit of background. The reason, the sort of the carrot, the incentive that the state holds out to towns um, to, ex to sort of encourage them to go ahead and regulate river corridors is to say that, okay, in the event of a federally declared flood disaster, we will contribute a larger amount of money towards your recovery, um, towards your expenses than we would otherwise, if you can show that you had uh, river corridor regulations on the books prior to the disaster. The river corridor is something that's mapped by the state. It's completely separate from um, the floodplains. Regulating river corridors does not impact your flood insurance rates for better or worse. It's just a completely separate animal. Um, and so we've had some discussions already. I shared this map with you all by email um, a couple times now, and I'd love to get your thoughts on whether you'd like to move forward with um, river corridor regulations. I will say, and I add, and I included this in my email that I sent out. I had a discussion with our 
um, floodplain expert in-house, Peter Pete Fellows. Um, and he said that, as, as you know, FEMA is gonna be redrawing the flood maps. We expect the new maps to be available 2025, 2026, somewhere in that area, you know, federal government, it's hard to predict. Um, not sure why that went away, I'm sorry. It's still underneath there. Yep. <clears throat> um, it is possible that when those floodplain maps are redrawn, even though river corridors are a completely different kettle of fish. Yeah. What's your name? That's okay. I think y'all can still hear me through the, I hope so, at least through the owl. Um, Dan, can you still hear me? Awesome, great. Um, even though river quarters are completely different kettle of fish, it's very possible that the state will take that opportunity to make some revisions to the standard river corridor regulations that they expect towns to adopt. Um, Pete said that there's been some discussions about possibly making those, those regulations a bit more nuanced, giving towns a little bit more flexibility to work within those. So if you feel like you're not totally confident about making a decision right now, if you wanna put this off, you might consider picking the question back up again in the 2025, 2026 timeframe um, and just see what the, what shapes out of the state in terms of what they're thinking about how to regulate the reporters. June, can you tell us, right, um, am I correct that FEMA pays 80% and it's a 20% that's that's the state and local share now. And that and we're talking about the split of that 20%. I can't say for sure. I'd have to dig okay. deeper. So the way that, that works is um this. And this is um this is discussion that you've all received copies of in a previous meeting. Um, this is just a standard handout that's available on the state's website. Um, so what the, the state is proposing is that if you were to adopt a seven, if you were to adopt your recorder regulations, they would pay 17.5% of the cost share. That, that would be their cost share, 17.5%. Um, Versus 15? Versus 12.5. 12 12.5. 12.5. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. And the federal and local breakdown, I don't have in front of me, but that is also available on the state's website. Mm -hmm. so I, that, per I personally had made a note that I wouldn't mind waiting for the real, but I mean, that's just my thought mm -hmm. so we wouldn't have to do it all over again but I mean and just to mm -hmm. see what they do come up with but mm -hmm. just me so and I so, sorry at the um last meeting you so these are the upsides is that we get a, a larger share but you also shared some the the challenges of the hoops that needed to be jumped through to, to do that? Is that something that you think would be simplified by waiting till they redo the state? It's impossible to tell what they're gonna do. It's hard to tell, honestly. Yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, the hoops that you would have to go through are the same hoops that you're going right now, going through right now with your bylaw provision, right? So you would effectively be adding a big chunk of text to your bylaw um, or creating separate, you could always create a separate ordinance um, and then you would go through the standard adoption process. Mm -hmm. Technically, like there are two roads to get to the 17.5% state cost share. One is adopting uh, river, cor river corridor regulations, excuse me, and the other is joining the community rating system. Um, we don't have any communities in our region who joined the CRS because those hoops are much higher okay, and just it's more of an administrative headache, right? right? And so if towns want to go that route, They've always gone the river corridor route because it's just easier. Having tried to read through um, all of your proposed changes today, um, I feel like 
like we have quite a lot on our plate right now mm -hmm. without adding a whole new category of stuff. Can, can I ask a yeah. question that I might have missed? Um, how, I'm just wondering how this would affect, um, uh, I'm so sorry, solar, like an mm -hmm. alternative energy, like building mm -hmm. in the in the corridor. I know there are a lot of open planes that people might want to mm -hmm. use for alternative energy, for solar panels. And I'm just wondering how this plays in and affects. Um, please yes. forgive me if you've already said this, and this is. That's a really great question. Um, I'm just grabbing, and this I provided to the board um, earlier as well. Um, but I believe that the same standards would apply to solar panels, solar installations, as they would to any other development, which is that you would not be able to build any closer to the river channel than the existing development already is. Uh -huh. um, so you would have to fit your plans within that existing sort of footprint. Is that per lot, per plot? I mean, because if you can't say, oh, down the river, someone is this close to the river, so then I can build this close to the river. Mm -hmm. no, so that's a really good question. Um, Probably dealing with a contour line or something or somewhere, aren't they? So Maya, did you have a question? We adjacent structures. Maya, go ahead. Um, you're muted, so you have to unmute. Sorry about that. Um, I was wondering who just asked the question about the solar panels. Christine, I'm here now. <laughs> oh, okay. Hi, Christine. Thank you. I, I scooted in. Hi. <laughs> Thank you. So I believe that the distance is determined by your immediately adjacent structures. So it's sort of calculated sense. within yes. yeah, okay. each section. I'm sorry, can you explain that? Yeah, so let's say that you, you're, you've you got, um, I don't know, maybe 100 feet between yourself and the bank yeah. in this little group of houses right here, but down the way, it's like only 50, 50 feet to the bank. That doesn't actually matter to you because you're calculating under the regulations, you're calculating your allowable distance from the bank based on the structures that are immediately to your left and your right, if that makes any sense. Thank you. I'm also thinking like that, that this is a, a pretty significant um, addition to our zoning bylaws. And I think it would need a fair amount of attention and explaining to uh, the community. And I was um, a little bit surprised at the number of properties, um, structures, as you scroll around through that map, especially in the, in the headwater streams, that are adjacent to. So there'll be a lot of um, properties that would be affected by this. Um, and as Sandy said, we're, we're gonna have a lot of changes that we're gonna be talking about um, in other parts of the bylaw. So I'd, I'd be happy to go the route that Julie said is, is to defer until there are some um, upcoming changes that we um, will see. Do you want a formal motion, Mr. Chair? That we table that we just table this. Yeah. Or just yeah. decide decide that we're not going to include it in this in this in this round of amendments to to the bylaw. Yeah, let's do that. So moved. I second this. <laughs> All in favor of deferring this until um, we have more information, maybe in twenty five or twenty six. Say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Okay. Let the notes show unanimous that uh, we were, um, uh, that we want to defer on the river corridor regulations. All right. Thank you, Sarah, on that topic. Thank you. Okay. So, from at this point, um, I'd like to dive into some of the topics that you saw on the topics and discussion and questions for discussion document. 
Um, and I'd like to start with district purposes, if I may. Um, so what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna share a Word document that is a, My apologies, I'm having some technical difficulties here. Sure, why it's not giving me an option to do this. So I'm going to try again. Let's share screen. We have except it's not. No. Okay. So this is going to be a little hard to read. I apologize. We're going to have to make do with what we got here. Um, okay. I hope that's visible for folks on the, uh, the Zoom land. So what I'm going to do here is there's a section of the um, bylaw which introduces the various zoning districts and it talks about the standards that are applicable to each of those zoning districts. As I was going through and I was doing a general sort of health and wellness check on um, the bylaw, I noticed that you did not have explicitly stated purposes for each of those districts. And the reason why it's important to have those is because from a statutory perspective, whenever you do a conditional use review, you are technically referencing the purpose, the stated purpose for that district. So you need to have that language in there somewhere in your bylaw mm -hmm. um, to make that a valid conditional use review. So what I've done here is I've gone through your town plan and I've looked for guiding language around what these districts are supposed to do and what they're supposed to accomplish, what they're supposed to be and feel like. Um, and where I was lacking in language in the town plan, I tried to take some examples from other towns that have similar kinds of districts and I've drafted up some language. So I wanted us to look through that together this evening. And I'd like to get your feedback and make edits together on the fly as needed, um, just so that we can get these nailed down. How does that sound to the committee? Sound okay? Good. That's great. Okay. So for the business residential district, I'm just going to read this out loud for the benefit of the folks who are on Zoom and might not be able to see it clearly. And I do apologize. The purpose of the business residential district is to encourage a broad mix of uses, including civic, commercial, including primary retail, higher density residential, light industrial and professional services. It supports the highest density development in the town within the limits of existing utility and facility capacities and compatibility with surrounding context and historical development patterns. How does that sound? What edits are needed? You sound wonderful. I was going to say, it sounded handling. Yes. Mm -hmm. Agreed. Yeah. Very well. Yeah, good. Okay, great. <laughs> we will move on. All right, let the minutes day. show <laughs> that we have approved the purpose for the. We have a purpose. <laughs> business residence. <laughs> okay. We're moving on to the commercial agricultural district. The purpose of this zone is to provide a location for future, future commercial development that would serve to complement existing businesses already well established in the village area. The location near this intersection of Route 173 with its proximity to the village center makes this area most favorable for expansion of business interests, provided that these businesses do not negatively impact the health of the business residential district. Businesses in this area may have a retail component, but only if it is clearly secondary to the primary use of the building. Both residential and agricultural uses are also compatible with the purpose of this land use area. Again, very well written. Could you scroll up so we can see the yep. whole thing? Absolutely. Here we go. I like it because it spells out that secondary um, retail is secondary component to the use of the building. 
Let's see, I don't remember the name. Do, does Maya have a question? Maya does. Um, yeah. Can you tell me the name of that district one more time? Agricultural? Commercial Agricultural is the one that we're working on right now. Thank you very much. Thank you. I like the wording. I wonder, does it box us in too much to say the purpose of it is only for future commercial development? So maybe delete the word future. Or I, I would, or add the word present and future. Mm -hmm. So location for um, current and future commercial development. Or just no words. Just, just, just leave it for commercial development. Yeah. yeah. It is nice, the future part. <laughs> you know. Mm -hmm. Growth mindset. I, I like removing future. I think that there you go. That's good right there. Yeah. Okay. Sounds good. Okay, so we'll move on then to the next district. which is the agricultural residential district. And the purpose here is, the purpose of this zone is to accommodate less intensive land uses such as agriculture, homes, small non-retail businesses, and outdoor recreation. The district incorporates open space to contrast with the more densely developed business residential and commercial agricultural districts, thereby helping preserve the historic settlement pattern of a compact village center surrounded by rural countryside. So you have um, the description crossed out. Is that just for the this purpose of this? Because you still we still want to have those descriptions, right? Let's talk about that. That's a separate issue. Separate issue. Yeah, let's talk about that. <laughs> you reference these guys. The only, only thing I would add is residential homes uh, at the beginning. So I just think it would be. I think it sounds residential clear. homes. Yeah. Okay. It might be redundant, but I think. Mm -hmm. What's a home that's not residential? Exactly. <laughs> Any other edits? No, I like it. Okay. okay. Let's keep going. This is the Aquifer Recharge District. So the purpose here is the purpose of this district is to protect the quality of the public water supply serving Rochester Village. These are the lands whose surface and groundwater serve to recharge the well that provides the village with its municipal water supply. Straightforward, works for me. Other than having a cemetery in our water supply, I think we're good. <laughs> okay. There's a little downhill action there, but <laughs> I'm going to move on um, to the. Oh yeah. Sorry. Just a, just a yep. curiosity. I don't, um, is the uh, well that's on the hill of Brook Street part of that? That's the reservoir. Oh, that's a just so a we pump the water animal. from the well up to the reservoir. And this gravity fed through town. Okay. Yeah. I didn't know if they were yeah. that was getting water from elsewhere or no, just from elsewhere. Yeah. Elsewhere. yeah. Okay. Let's move on here to the conservation residential district purpose. The purpose of this district is to preserve Rochester's rural character and working lands. These lands exhibit the least potential for supporting high density development since most of the land is characterized by steep slopes, shallow and fragile soils high elevations and remote locations. Uses compatible with the purposes of this land use area include agriculture, forestry, recreation, and properly sited residential development. Good. I'm a little concerned with saying most of the land is characterized as steep slopes, shallow soils, fragile soils. Um, I don't know that it's most. Uh, there's a lot of um, good ag land up there with 
sufficient soil depths. Um, so we change it to sense much of the land? Or includes land or in some... Often characterized? Could we change it to since most of the land is characterized by um, prime agricultural soils, comma, steep slopes, shallow and fragile soils, high elevations, and or remote locations? So it's kind of a any or all of the above. That works for me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, that's like all the hollows. That's, that's a lot of area out there. Mm -hmm. It's all of this white. It's all the hollows. Okay. This area. Uh, so now we have we now we have agricultural soils, and then we have fragile soils. Mm -hmm. Too many soils. Well, I don't know. I'm just. Oh, uh, I'm okay with that. It's sort of redundant, but uh, but I would also um, wouldn't mind adding in. Um, large forest blocks in there as well as we're talking about working landscape. Great. Do, do we, because we've been so, um, so sorry, where is today? We've been so uh, descriptive. Do we need the and or remote locations? No. Could it just be and remote locations? It's characterized by all of these things. I'm good with community matter folks, right? Huh? Yeah, I agree. Yeah, it's fine. <clears throat> no. um, do we want to have, oh, we have recreation, okay. No recreating in this town. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Sounds like we're good to move on from that. No, we do here. Um, <clears throat> only other remaining district is the floodplain, the, the flood hazard district, um, the overlay. And that already has an extensive purpose statement in there. So I feel confident that that's good to go. Plus, we had discussed at the last meeting that we're not going to open up the floodplain regulations as part of this revision process. Um, because again, FEMA is going to be doing a lot of changes in the next few years or so. So it doesn't make sense to open that kettle of fish right now. Um, so thank you. That is super helpful. Um, the next thing that I was hoping we could talk about were use lists. Um, and so just to sort of a, a recap of what we talked about last time, I had proposed, and this is a structure that we recommend to the towns that we work with on their bylaws, um, and that a lot of towns in our region have, have adopted in their bylaws, is to structure your use list such that you say that all uses that are not exempt, prohibited, or permitted will be assumed to be conditional uses. So that gives you the flexibility that if you can't imagine a particular use right now, it will still be considered a conditional use in the future, even if it's not specifically named in your bylaw right now. Um, and that saves you from having to try to come up with every possible use category, which you might not be able to imagine, right? So, um, so I have a question yeah. on that. Mm -hmm. um, when we did this many years ago, mm -hmm. the, um, our, our helper from your, from your office um, made it clear to us that conditional uses, we should think of conditional uses as permitted uses. It's, and this came up in the context mm -hmm. of, of whether we were going to expand uh, where we where commercial activity could happen mm -hmm. and and we said oh we'll make it conditional then we can decide and he said no once you once you say it's conditional you're basically saying yes you can do it you know subject to a few limitations so it makes me a little nervous to say anything that we haven't thought of is is permitted with conditions so we could reframe that to anything you haven't thought of is prohibited. <laughs> so, and some towns have gone that route, right? They said, okay, anything that's not exempt, permitted, or conditional use is prohibited. That is a more draconian way to go, but if you feel more comfortable with, with that, we can work with that. If you think of something we haven't thought of, <laughs> no. Right. So I just wanted to throw that out. We, as we think about 
these mm -hmm. lists because as right. you pointed out, we, we can't think of everything. Mm -hmm. right. um, okay. I feel the same way, Sandy, but uh, maybe an, a, a workaround would be that um, things that aren't on the list could be presented as conditional use and may be granted if, um, if, all, if all the impacts can be mitigated. Um, so we give them a chance to propose it and we say, well, yeah, we can mitigate those those effects with the criteria that we have, or no, we can't. Um, so we, le we at least get to hear, rather than say, if it's not on the list, it's prohibited, at least we get to hear some new and creative ideas of mm -hmm. um, things to do, but we can turn it down if, if they can't um, <clears throat> mitigate the impacts. I don't know how to say it in about five words, but. <laughs> well, that is the, the goal of the conditional use process, right? That, that is the purpose of the conditional use process. You're not guaranteeing that everything that goes through the conditional use review is going to get approved, right? Right. right? So if you shape your standards appropriately, you can make sure that you're not permitting something that's going to have egregious impacts. On the, the, the measure is undue impact, right? Right. That's the, yeah, right. Mm -hmm. If we I can avoid that, I mean, uh, yeah, I mean, because uh, Sandy, the way Sandy put it, that um, there are permitted uses with conditions, but they may not necessarily be. If they don't fit the conditions or, or can't meet the conditions or whatever. Can I ask a historical question? When has, has it been often that we have not approved a conditional use? I can't think of one that we've turned down. Um, I can think of some that had some pretty stringent conditions, uh, the um, weddings up on the hill, I think I think we, we said like two a year until we see how it goes or something like that, so. Um, and do you feel that that definitely like there was enough um, mitigation of? I think it depends on which neighbor you ask. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So that's that's the only worry of saying it's all conditional use. Then it's what leg do we have to stand on to say no? So the, we will be going through the criteria, but the criteria are pretty. And I actually sent them out. Um, I sent you what was in the statute, and and um, Sarah has has actually copied that into the new draft. Um, and it's you know uh, no no undue impact on these things. And you have the, the, the legal power to add additional uh, standards beyond what statute which we enables, have, which, we have which you have, and which I'm hoping we'll continue to have discussions about as part of this process, because I think that there's some more standards that could be added to your commission. Okay. I had made a note. I read all the useless, like uh, Bethel Newberry and Pomfret, I read them all. I wrote, I'm not even sure what it means now because it was a long time. Pomfret had a lot of exemptions, but Pomfret was the best. It was simpler with the dimensional requirements in a chart. We don't have them in a chart. Their, their little Pomfret charts were nice, <laughs> but that was just my personal opinion. I, I mean, it's probably too late to change ours, but theirs was very simple to. I'm more than happy to create charts once we get like the pieces pinned down. Right, right? theirs yeah. is much simpler to follow than ours for right. some reason. To me, man, but I liked it because it was simple. Yeah, but that was just me. I, I wrote. They had they, they must have sat down for days and thought of exemptions because they had thousands. Pomfret did, but I actually worked on Pomfret's file <laughs> with, hey, with they had Kevin. Um, yeah, and Kevin really and. This is something I'm hoping we can talk about is your exemption list, right? Because it yeah. doesn't really exist right now. There's not much in there. Right. Um, that's what I think so, about. That's what I was reading theirs. <laughs> you know, that list that you saw in Pomfret really comes from Kevin's 30 years of planning experience oh, okay. um, and recognize and us reading through statute and recognizing what are the de minimis impacts that you can exempt that will just make things easier for folks so they don't have to. Yeah. You know, go through the permitting process every single Well, time. and Newberry, I wrote down just as a funny side note, exemptions with clotheslines. <laughs> I said, who, who's sitting in this room for hours thinking of all this? Anyway, but anyway, I personally like Pompers, but anyway. Just... Uh, but there, are, there are housing developments that don't allow clotheslines. Oh. That's where that comes that's from. That's where it comes there from. Actually, there actually was a bill 
in the legislature for what they called a hang dry to to, to have no it. to 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 preserve your your God given right to hang your clothes outside. <laughs> and I'm not, and I'm not sure it ever passed. Right. Um, anyway. But it's in Newberry's. But anyway, that's just a personal side note. Where, where else would you hang them? <laughs> okay. Now, Sarah, Sarah yeah. hearing our, our concerns about the um, prohibited, what what um, would you suggest for a wording there? So is the question about like what's not named? What are we going to do with it? Yeah, I mean the one the one end yeah. is one extreme is if it's not named, it's prohibited. Right. And the mm -hmm. other is, well, we said it's conditional use or it could be heard as conditional use. Or how could we say that to keep the door open to um, good potential uses for the land? My personal recommendation is to say that anything that's not named is a conditional use and you just make sure that your conditional use standards are reflective of your town's values and are protective of anything that you're concerned about. Is a conditional use or can be considered as a conditional use? Is a conditional use. So there's no distinction there from a legal standpoint. Right, so there is one process, right? There's no like, oh, maybe we like you and you're you're a solid conditional use and then you're a weak conditional use. There's only one legal process. Everything gets run through the same thing, yeah. No pick and choose? No pick and choose. No. <laughs> I mean, y'all can set yourself up for a lawsuit if you want to, but we're here to try to discourage that. We'll try to those things. Can anyone not live with that alternative of saying if it's not listed, it's conditional? Sounds like we can go with that then. I'm buying on it. Okay. Great. Okay. Um, Sarah, can you yeah. respond to Dune's question about the um, the difference between describing the, the districts and using the map? Yes. Thank you. I'm sorry. Um, so, just for background for folks um, who might not be familiar with the ordinance, so the current language of the ordinance. Um, has sections that describe in, in a narrative way the location of those districts. And it describes that they follow certain contour lines, et cetera. Um, it's the recommendation of our office to stay away from textual descriptions of where the districts lie because it's not as accurate as the map, right? You have a map, you can use that as a tool. And so what we recommend for all of our towns when they do their bylaws is that you reference, you say the locations of these districts are as shown on our zoning map, um, which is you know a GIS document, so it gets very specific about where, where those zoning boundaries lie. Um, and then if there are any disputes, and I've added some language in, actually I'm gonna, I apologize for folks for this quick scrolling. Um, I've added some proposed language up here that says, um, in the event of uncertainty about the limits or boundaries of any district, except for the flood hazard overlay district, the ZBA shall have the authority and power upon the request of a landowner and after a public hearing to determine where such lines actually fall on the ground. Questions about the boundaries of the flood hazard overlay district will be resolved as described in section 3.11 because it has its own process um, spelled out within the flood hazard regulations. So that's our recommendation and um, you know, I think that this is a, like, for example, if you look at the business residential district, the description of where the bounds of that zone lie includes the word, the word roughly, right? That is not a word that we want to see in a zoning ordinance. We want a very specific, <laughs> like, this is where the, the line is. And, you know, because it's so hard to state that in words, it's much easier to just reference the map because that has all the information there. I guess there was that situation when um, for the Tenter site where he used the elevation as a very specific, he hiked up the road and to mm -hmm. see whether or not he was above or below the 940 foot contour line. So there mm -hmm. are, you know, it's in a way that, in, and the river is is there if we got rid of roughly, you know, mm -hmm. it's, it's, um, 
if I don't know if it's if it's necessary to get get rid of those specifics, but uh, mm -hmm. they, they seems like it can go hand in hand with the, the map. Sometimes maps are mm -hmm. um, are rough. Correct. Correct. <laughs> yeah, I mean it's hard to you know. I mean, the 940 foot contour line is pretty specific, and I suppose on a map would have contour lines, and you could have that that also. Mm -hmm. um, is it that much of a detriment to have a little bit of text in there? I don't think so. I think as long as you're very clear about the order of precedence for mm -hmm. reference. So you could, for example, say the zoning map is your first port of call, right? And if there are any questions from there, reference the elevation specifications mm -hmm. in the zoning descriptions for each zone. If that makes does that make sense? Like you're, you have to be very clear about what has the primary authority. Mm -hmm. Well were these maps created from those descriptions? Presumably I was not around uh, when that I'm map was created. That, that would that would uh... But I can't this would guarantee be the physical there, manifestation of the written description. But, but I can't guarantee that there aren't discrepancies, especially right, right. since, I mean, I don't know what that word roughly means. Maybe there's a part that doesn't follow the 940 contour line. I don't know, right? So, yeah, it's challenging. I, I um, think of it in terms of uh, accessibility for folks that maybe um, don't read maps well, or don't have access to um, the map mm -hmm. online, or or can't come into the office, um, but can can read the description to give them a rough idea. Uh, I like ha having that accessible right there in the plan under the description, and putting the the caveat that you know the maps are the, the be all end all and the final say, and what you had up there at, at the top is you know the the um, the board has the final authority on you know, where that line is on the ground. So I guess definitely look take out like the word roughly. Right, take out the word roughly. So the ZBA will resolve any questions arising from the map with reference to um, the narrative descriptions of the boundaries found within the bylaw. Say that again. So the ZBA will resolve any questions arising from the maps by referencing the narrative descriptions that are in the bylaw. I would restore the narrative descriptions mm -hmm. and that would be part of your deliberation process is to look at that, you know, the discussion about the contour lines and yeah. So the narrative yeah. description is the first point of reference. Is basically what second point second. of reference, right? Because should, the map is the first, and then if there's any concerns or questions, that the citizen right. would come to you, and then you would look at the map and look at these narrative descriptions gotcha. to make a decision. Yeah, that sounds okay. Yeah. Okay. Great. Works for me. Um, Anyone object to that? Using that. And we lose roughly. Right. Okay. How I about approximately? Weapon. <laughs> <laughs> She'll follow the White River, man. Um, I think that sort of wishy washy language shows up in several of the descriptions. So I'll, I'll check mm. those other ones as well. Yeah. Uh, I yeah. feel the need to point out here that, that in Irene, there was a house in Bethel that where the where the river actually moved and the house turned into an island mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so um it, it, it so the, the white river does move and <laughs> but, I, but right as now. i'm looking at this i'm not sure that that but, but we don't want we don't want our business residential zone to be on the other side so i guess that that language will still hold but i just want everybody to be aware of the fact that when we're using the river that it's it's fluid. Well, it's fluid. This, the river it is has going to be wishy washy in a way. The river will yeah. be a different river down yeah. by us. The western boundary is never going to change because yeah. that's yeah. up against the mountain. So it's just that northern little. Anyway, yeah, the river mm -hmm. does what it's going to do. Okay. Are we still on the use ones, the use lists? 
We are, um, yes, yes. So we have not yet talked about exemption prohibition for permitted uses. Do you have oh. a specific question? I did, but okay. it's a irrelevant one. But I was reading conference. And under the prohibited uses, if we're there, are we at the prohibited yet? Um, we, we <laughs> Did we finish the dive into those? I thought we might start with exemption first. Okay, if that's, that's fine. okay with you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, from a logical standpoint, let's let's start talking about exemptions. Um, so this is on page thirty-two of the document and I'm going to have to scroll. I apologize for folks who are well, on that note in. about the pomper ones having yep. a million exemptions. Is that plagiarism to use any of theirs? Because they yep. have a lot. You are welcome to copy and paste from any of your fellow towns. That is so not a concern. Lot of what we have it came into its original existence. But I don't. Considering yeah. that marinas are on here. They had a lot. <laughs> so that, was, that was one I thought I might open. Being that I'm right on the river. So what I've done here is I've added some suggested um, preamble language around sort of procedure. And this is sort of coming from other towns that we've worked with and just my general knowledge of exemptions. The uses, structures, and development listed in the section shall be required to meet all setback and potential requirements, but are otherwise exempt from the requirement to obtain a zoning permit under this ordinance. Written, written notification to the administrative officer of intent to build is required. It is also advisable to check with the administrative officer to ensure that any contemplated use, structure, or development meets the requirements of this section. This exemption does not apply to any development within the flood hazard overlay district or in the aquifer recharge district. Uses, structures, and development that are exempt under this ordinance may not be exempt from the requirements of the subdivision regulations, and the reader is encouraged to consult that document for more information. How does that sound? Procedurally, it sounds like it says it, do your homework. Right. Mm -hmm. So there are a lot of required in there, but I'm assuming they're all required to be in there, right? They're all important. All all the required words. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yes. <laughs> I mean, there's a Necessary. lot. Of, okay. And and your current language does say you've got to have written notification to the AO okay. for. Um, intense build. And I've just sort of like filled that out a little bit more to make it more uh, comprehensive. Oh, I see what she's saying. She's just saying, but read the first line. Um, uh, uh, uses, structures, and development listed in this section. Can it just say shall meet all setback and dimensional requirements instead of required to? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, there were a lot of requirements. I apologize. I'm with you now. Okay. You're right. Yep. I'm with you now. All setback. There you go. Yeah, that's a lot better. Nice. Thank you. That's what I was trying to say. Lots of many requirements. <laughs> Sometimes you just fall in love with the word. I don't know. <laughs> it's a bylaw. <laughs> Require comes up a lot. <laughs> Require me. Most okay, so, that's good. so we should move yep. on then to mm -hmm. actually discussing the uses. Um, that could be exempt. So your current language does exempt um, accepted agricultural practices and accepted um, forestry practices. The language is a little outdated um, and not quite reflective of statute. So what I've put in there is um, language that we would recommend um, regarding required agricultural and forestry pra practices, which includes per statute, um, the processing or sale of agricultural and forestry products primarily, which case law interprets as more than 50% produced on the premises. Um, and so, and we did add some language to the definition section too, to sort of, again, from statute to, to further bolster this. Um, but what we would also recommend is sort of creating some uh, safety nets as it, as it were um, for farm structures. So while no town permits are required for construction of a farm structure, a farm operator shall submit a zoning permit application so that the, and I apologize for the ZA, for the, a, the AO, can determine whether the proposed structure qualifies as a farm structure and whether it meets the setback requirements of the zoning district in which it will be located per the Secretary of Agriculture's policy. The Secretary may grant a waiver to the setback requirements upon written request. 
and after notifying the town, no application fees or further action by the applicant shall be required if the AO determines that the proposed structure qualifies as a compliant farm structure. Um, and then this is just sort of with regard to access, because I think folks often forget about access when they're thinking about um, their projects, temporary accesses for forestry operations may require an access permit by the select board and a bond to ensure protection of public roads. So we're talking about log, um, uh, logging roads. Correct, yeah. temporary ones, yep. Yeah. Oh. Do we need to put that in there? Are we gonna assume that they'll know? Well, it says forestry operations. Okay. Yeah, there you go. How does that sound to folks? Does that ring okay? Very good. Yeah. So the word the word may in there um, leads to what determines whether mm -hmm. it does or doesn't. This the secretary may grant. I think that that is that what you're talking about. I think that's the secretary of ag. That's the secretary, and they have their own processes determined through statute. So if somebody wanted to get a waiver, they would have to go through the secretary of agriculture. Well, I was thinking of the line two. Yeah. Right. I was listening yeah. line two. One, the two. temporary access right. for forestry operations mm -hmm. may require an access permit. Ah, I'm sorry. But okay. Mm -hmm. It's okay. There were two. Um, yeah. It's like, uh, that's a wishy washy one. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what would you prefer that to be? Are they required? Well, there may be an existing road, I think is what she's yeah. trying to say there. Right. So this is where there's no road. Mm. I'm guessing. Mm -hmm. But maybe it is. I think this is this is for existing roads, and then, you know, if they are building a new access that's temporary, then that well, means time, do yeah, you the, want the that that makes right sense. there that they access the highway road, and so right. you want some control over whether they destroyed the road. Well, that makes sense then, written that way, don't you think, people? Well, Dan, you're the one who did this. What do you think about it? If there's already an existing road there. Well, it's the question is something they're not, and they're, right. just, they're just putting something across a ditch to get to their landing. Mm -hmm. That washes out. Mm -hmm. You'd like to at least be able to see it, I imagine, to have some yeah. conversation with them. Yeah. Nice should, to at least know what's going on, mm -hmm. you know, before someone just decides to, to pop in, we're going to connect to the road here. Mm -hmm. So, you want, you want to get rid of the main one, the main then? Could put will or just require, just take yeah. out May. Temporary yeah. access yeah. require. Require. Yeah. There you go. So, a lot of them, um, so the requirement of a bond would be a new imposition on that that's not required now, I don't believe, for just access to a road. Um, um, what is, what's the purpose of the bond to make sure it's restored to? Yeah, it's just to, um, you could say possibly a bond to ensure protection of public roads if it's in a, in a questionable spot. In some areas, it's like, okay, that's fine. Thanks for letting us know, no big deal. Mm -hmm. And other spots, it's going to be obviously going to have a significant impact mm -hmm. on the roads. So then it's a May. Problem. But it could be, right. it could be requires an access permit and may and possibly a bond. Possibly a bond, yeah. There you go. That works for me. Too. There you go. Now you, now you have you go. say so. Now we're, uh, Christine is suggesting that require and first line require needs an S. Temporary accesses. Oh, no. Accesses. No, require. Operations. There. Okay. Okay. Move along. Yes. Um, so here I have, this is the language that already exists in your bylaw, um, power generation and transmission facilities that are regulated by the PUC are exempted under statute. Um, you have a provision there that says that they should conform to the policies and objectives specified, specified for such development in the town plan. Um, and here you've got some language pertaining to hunting, fishing, and trapping, which I've left as is. I've added a section here for networked communications that are regulated under statute by the PUC. And so this is really in the same vein as mm -hmm. your power generation and transmission facilities. These are beyond your legal control to regulate. But again, I've added that language. They should conform to the policies and objectives specified in the town plan. 
I've added two more suggestions here. Um, one pertains to accessory dwelling units, and this is sort of coming out of our conversation about promoting the development of additional housing in Rochester. And so um, one tiny piece of that conversation is a recommendation we're making to our town is that if somebody wanted to create an accessory dwelling unit um, within the existing footprint of their building and they're not changing the total number of bedrooms in the structure, um, that that should be exempt from a permit. Um, because really you're not changing water, wastewater, or anything like that. You're just putting up some walls within a house, an existing house, and you're not changing the, the actual impact. Um, and I did, I did include sort of a, um, a loophole here that it doesn't apply in flood hazard areas because that needs more scrutiny. But I wanted to put that to the commission to ask for your thoughts on that particular provision. So the, the important thing is the number of bedrooms and that, the, that covers it. Right, and you're not changing the, the occupancy issue of the house or the dwelling. And the, bedroom, although the building. Bed, bedrooms are what drive sewage rules. Mm -hmm. Although it wouldn't the accessory building, wouldn't they be doing bedrooms? No? Well, if, if, if you're carving up my house and I'm, and I'm just, and I'm just setting aside this bedroom to go. Well, you're talking about room. an existing structure. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's yeah, what it is. What's oh, there. That's what I it thought is. I was reading it wrong. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Sounds good to me. The garage can come in for it then. Dan, can you still see my screen? I can. Yep. Okay. Was, awesome. was, Thank you. I'm sorry. It was gone for a minute there, but I can see it now. Yep, the internet died out for a minute and came back, thankfully. Okay, so it sounds like we're okay with the ADU language. Yeah, as yep. okay. Yep. Um, yeah, and I like I like that you have owner occupied. Uh -huh. Yep, that's not that's not statutorily statutorily required, is it? Um, the spices there. In this down. particular, so statutory statute says that if you're going to have an ADU, the owner has to be somewhere on the lot, but the owner could live uh, in the ADU, and right. an ADU is. A, a detached ADU is statutorily protected as well. Okay. So, but okay. when you're talking about ADUs in general, the owner has to be somewhere on the lot. Okay. Okay. Um, and so as I was looking through exemption lists from other towns, I was thinking, okay, what's, you know, bare minimum that I would recommend that they include? Um, I saw that you had some language, I think, around fences already in a different part. And so, I've sort of merged that together with some recommended language from other towns. And I've written fences, berms, man-made earthen structures, stone or retaining walls, any of which are up to 4.5 feet high and are placed outside of the right of way. Placement inside of the right of way or failure to meet setback requirements from the edge of the road surface requires a waiver and a permit. Outside the right of way, okay. So a question on this then, a, um, a retaining wall, let's say, um, could be right on your property line, as long as it's outside of the right of way, um, of right of way. But um, you know, on the property line with a neighbor, you could build a retaining wall. It's not considered a structure that needs a permit. Um, we could we could make that clear. Um... Is that yeah, is that the way you we would read this though? Uh, as far as right away, are we considering that like part that's like also say the side or rear setbacks of the property? No, no, we're no. talking we're talking a road right, road right away. Like what maybe used to be down in front of the Catholic Church, although you can't see mm -hmm. much of it anymore because it's kind of under grass and whatever. But there are some properties have utility rights of way. Do we want to make it clear that we're talking about highway rights of way? Mm. Yeah, I like that. And I'm, I'm raising the question because I've had in the last couple of years um, at least two inquiries about fences being placed right on the property line. And some mm -hmm. people have said, well, there has to be a setback from, from the property line. And there's nothing in our zoning that said, said such a thing. And I couldn't find it anywhere. So I've been advising folks that they could build a fence right on their property line. And I would, from this, I would 
um, assume the same would be for a berm or a um, retaining wall or So what happens to to the to the fence as, on the side of my property if it's six feet tall? You would go through the permitting process. I think I've lost the thread of. of, of These okay. are exemptions. Exemptions. Thank you. Permit. Yep. Thank mm -hmm. you. I mean, we, we can leave it just as it is if it's clear to everyone that. So, so you're basically you're saying something like a privacy fence. If maybe you wanted it to be eight feet tall. You need a permit. Would require. Would require yeah. Even, but it, even but if it, it's not in the right of way, and it's not. But it, but it should be. But it should be granted because because it, we don't we don't require setback for a fence. Mm, right. But it but it would require. Um, be the okay. standard process of going to the AF. Okay. And a, a line of trees, is that considered a, a, a agricultural fence? No? <laughs> no it's not a fence. Landscaping. Yeah. Okay. That would be a silver fence. Okay. Well, so I, have... I think I'm ready to say that this looks okay. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Good for me. Yeah. Okay. 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 Um, so at this point, I wanted to ask if there were additional types of development, additional uses that you wanted to add to this exemption list. I didn't want to go too crazy and start dumping everything from the comfort list in there because it's really, it's a values question, right? Um, and so I- I, Those lines could get heated. I, I put in the fences because I feel like that was pretty, you know, basic. Um, de minimis stuff. I, I couldn't open the comfort list. Could somebody read it? You have it. Did you bring it? I actually have it printed. You want it? Or, or you could just read it, please. It's, it's pretty long. Quite long. No, no, it doesn't. Quite long. Okay, forget it. Um, no, I have it. <laughs> but I, what I could do for the benefit of everybody um, is boil it up. Yeah. So, it's long. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I picked out a few that um, from all the examples that I liked. I could share those. Actually, yeah, Sandy, you might be right. Uh, there's somebody was... in the waiting room. Where is that? Okay. Yeah, I didn't print it out. I must have read it online. I just remember reading it. Yeah, I must have read it. I just remember it being really long. I don't see anybody in the waiting room. Sheila. Popped in, popped out. Tired of waiting. Yeah, I must have read it online. We, we used to, um, well, I get in the for a minute. I had participants up. Yeah, and get I'm looking at participants, participants, and there's nobody, nobody in the waiting room. Oh, yeah. I want to send me an apology. Do you, do you still have your? No, I did. It's not up. Okay, because you've because you've taken over my screen. But I think you can start with the participants. Yeah, waiting room Sheila. Just admit that. It was not close. It's yeah. okay. I think you still have the call for some reason. Because I don't have that. He's joining. Okay. Awesome. I'm never sure. Did you want to take a moment for her to introduce yourself? Uh, oh, it's just in my head. Uh, no. Okay. okay. So um, just for the benefit of folks who are online, uh, this is a copy of Comfort's uh, bylaw, and they have quite an extensive exemption list, um, including temporary structures with many caveats attached to those, um, normal maintenance and repair, um, so long as you're not you know, altering dimensions or change of use. Interior alterations, temporary events, um, on-premise signs that meet certain specifications, and those are quite detailed. Um, yes, indeed. Um, <laughs> also, uh, sort of antennae and satellite dishes, those kinds of things, um, non-commercial trails, grading, filling, excavation, 
um, with some caveats there too. Uh, yeah, as you can tell, it, it goes it goes on um, <laughs> like clotheslines and other energy devices, um, chimneys, patios, terraces, that sort of stuff. De minimis structures or uses not specifically mentioned in this ordinance that are incidental and customary to the use on the lot, um, which is the catch-all kind of, of provision there. So that would be like a tool shed, yeah. arguably. Well, I think they've referenced tool sheds. <laughs> right. I think, I think we do have one there. <laughs> it was one of the, and the kind of tools that were in the tool shed. <laughs> <laughs> Dan, did you say you had you had made a list of the ones you liked? I, I did, and you know there there are, there aren't there are there are no bad ones on this list. I think they all make sense. How, how big of a list do we do we want? How far do we want to go? Um, so I don't know. <clears throat> I can tell you the ones that I, that I liked. Why don't you run those by us, Dan? Okay. Um, I like the uh, non-commercial trail. That was in two of the, the uh, examples. Um, I like the temporary structures and events. So it allows someone to put up a, you know, a, a wedding tent for, for an event or, or a concert. Um, uh, fuel and um, propane tanks for one and two family homes. Um, I like the de minimis um, structures, which would give Dune a little bit of a um, little bit of leeway. That way we don't have to list everything under the sun. Um, 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 temporary structures that are up for um, less than a year. Um, um, temporary structures such as campers, travel trailers, TPs, um, things that are not permanent structures. Um, as long as it's not permanent storage of such. Yeah, we've had in the past, I think we had a, a rule that you couldn't live in a, a, a travel trailer for more than three months. Yeah, I think we do have that. And this, and the one in the, um, I think it's the Newberry one talks about a number of days in a year. I think it was 60 days in a year that you could, you know, live in your TP or something like that. Regarding like using it though, um, just as an example, how would like the uh, camper that's just moved in across the road from my home up against the highway in front of that Howard Curtis's old house? I mean, she's just storing it there for the winter, but I mean, how does that fit into this? That's going to be the just, L, isn't it? Yeah, it's just stored there. No one's living in it. But right, I'm, okay, but that's what I mean. These these uh, exempted uses, I mean, is that we're just calling it, just parking it there, and that's a use, and that's okay. I, I would say that's not even a use. You're just parking your, your camper right, in here. Right. I'm just, I, I was I just curious because it popped in there, you know, not that I have yeah. any opposition to it personally. Yeah. I mean, so, it, how is it different from a, a big truck? Oh, it's, I guess it's not really. So, I just, I don't know, it came to mind when you mentioned yeah, so it's, no, it's trailers and such. So you, yeah. you have some language already in your, your bylaw, um, the standards pertaining, pertaining to travel trailers. Travel trailers, pickup campers, motorhomes, or any other similar vehicle used for recreational purposes may be parked or stored on a lot when used as a temporary residence for a period not to exceed three months, no permit is required. Doesn't so it sounds like I would add that to this list. Somebody being in that trip. So when such vehicles are used over three months consecutively, they must meet all requirements applicable to dwellings. This okay. provision shall not apply to a recreational vehicle in an established campground. So, so to be clear, that would allow someone to live in the camper for three months, take a day off, and then move all their stuff out and then move all their stuff back in. It is, I mean, just the way we- I'm just it. wondering why we even have the rule. I mean, this day and age of affordability of any housing at all, what's wrong with living in one? 
I mean, I'm confused. Oh, I have no, I have no issue with it, but it just, it was just an oddity. I mean, why? It's, it's not prohibited it's, it's to live all year round in one. You just have to get a permit, permit like any other residence. Yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. 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 I think the concern is, is, is septic and water and, and like that. Okay. So again, there's a long list of potential exemptions, and I don't know how, how we want to um, want to deal with it. I mean, those were just a few that I that jumped out at me. Um, sure, clothes lines and chimneys and pergolas are should be exempt too, but I'd rather give that uh, discretion to the um, administrative officer to just be able to tell people if they even ask. Yes, it never occurred to me to ask for clothes lines. <laughs> or, or no. I mean, what's the requirement? A porch post and a tree. I mean, you know. Anyway. Yeah, I agree with Dan to not have mm -hmm. things like that. Okay, I I move that Sarah add the ones that Dan just mentioned mm -hmm. to the list, and that we look at those in the next draft. I second, second that. Third. Thirded it and fourth it. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Dan. Sure. Um, I'll send you that list, Sarah. And thank you so much. And which um, which bylaw they came out of, so you can just cut and paste them. Awesome. Thank you. Okay. Ooh, I'm action item here. for Dan. Maya, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Maya has a hand up. Thanks. Um, I'm Hi. just wondering, can you? Um, uh send me uh just a list that list i don't i'm not sure i got them all of the ones I, I i will suggest that for purposes of the minutes it's enough to say that we are going to expand the list of exemptions and it will be in the next draft yeah okay good okay all right and your action item dan is to get that list to sarah yes okay got it thank you good. Good, thanks, Maya. Maya. Good clarification. It's a new term that came up in the last meeting that I missed this action item thing. Yes, no. yes, been, we, have, been, we, have, uh, we have many for you, David. No, 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 you're not no, here, guess no, what? You get no, signed no. up. Open mouth and start foot. <laughs> okay, so we've talked through the exemptions <laughs> list. Let's move on to the prohibited list. Um, <laughs> And so basically what I'd like us to do is just to step through each of the zoning districts. And um, I'd like your guidance around what uses are prohibited in each of those districts. Add to recharge everything. Right, so um, we'll come to that in a minute. Let's start, <laughs> let's start with business residential, which is a harder one. Um, well, am I, I, am I correct? We, we can't, we can't prohibit agriculture ever. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. So, so I can raise sheep in the village. On your roof. Or a pigsty. That was actually. Well, that's all we're going on. This is the very end of it. Right. I was thinking about slaughterhouses today. I don't want slaughterhouses. In the oh. business person. Me either. Um, anyway. Is that agriculture? I don't know that this is agriculture because um, that should be in a remote area. Uh, Maya has her hand up again, guys. I'm sorry, I just forgot to put it down last time. Um, are we doing the perm uh, sorry, the um, permitted one? So the just just a small she, point. Wants, she wants she wants us to she wants us to make a list for the things that we that would we would prohibit. Okay. In the in yes. the business residential. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah. This in. this business residential slash village um, it is I've seen it in different uh, represented differently in different places. Do we have one term? Right. So so, wait, so you so you missed last month and we, we had this debate last month. Okay. Okay. Um, and what we what we decided is that the zone that we've always had is business residential. 
We, you and I will call it the village, and we know what we mean by that. Okay, but, but it's, that is the one place. <laughs> yeah. okay. It's not two different separate entities. It's not. And so what okay. our office will do is I'll we'll revise the label on the zoning district map, so you're good to go. Yeah. Cool. There is there is a designated village. That's correct. Village yeah. center. There, there's a special process that we went through with the state to right. get a designate that gives us. Some tax advantages to somebody and in access sure. to and that's and that's and, and that's other things. that's yeah. much smaller. Yeah. Okay. It's like business residential center. <laughs> okay. Gotcha. Okay. Okay. So, Sandy, you you uh, brought up slaughterhouse. Is that what the term you used? Yes. I don't want a slaughterhouse next door to me. Well, um, okay. And so I think I that, you, you know, if it's, build something if it's just a slaughterhouse, it's not actually connected to a farm, then I don't think it falls under the agricultural protections. Because um, they would be like a customer. Oh, oh, yeah. Okay. Use oh, yeah. Right. Yeah. It's it has right. to be produced on if, if you were, right. if you had, obviously, if you had a farm, you could. You right. could kill your yeah, right. yeah yeah that's not that's not what I meant right we're talking about sort of out so, so, black and yeah. burn. so if someone um, has a beef cow well I think of it maybe as a um, you know butcher slop shop slash slaughterhouse where people bring their livestock not on large scale but you know the 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 two um, beef cow you raised and a couple of pigs and you bring them um, to a shop. Um, and they slaughter them, process them, um, you know, take care of the carcasses in a responsible way, and give the meat back to the the uh, the grower. Is that a slaughterhouse? I know a lot of people make a business out of doing that during the you know venison during the hunting season. Um, yeah. It's yeah. temporary chop shop if you want to call it such. Um, you know, not everybody I'm thinking of the, the uh, processes their own. Is it is it the country butcher over there in Randolph that processes? It used to be, but yeah, yeah. I, I, I don't know. I, I that did come to my mind also. Um, if the carcasses were not disposed of on on the property, I might think differently of it. If they hauled them off and um, you know, disposed or composted them or did whatever they do with them somewhere so else. So again, um, the question is whether whether that should happen in the business residential zone. And well, I would argue not. Business, yeah. Not really commercial retail type thing. I, I would think that it could be in commercial ag or ag residential, but not not, not in the village, but that's just me. Yeah. 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 I would think the nature of that would kind of tend to lend people to be a little more farther removed from yeah. other yeah. people. Okay. Uh, I feel you. I feel you. We had a um, inquiry about a, um, can't remember if it was an airstrip or a helicopter. Landing pad might have been a helicopter landing pad. Um, though, to me, I think that is like a safety and a noise thing that we wouldn't want in the village. Any thoughts on that? They're like like much bigger entities than us that regulate a lot of that type of stuff. Probably are. <laughs> but I would agree with Dan. It doesn't. Whether, whether it belongs anywhere in town, it certainly doesn't belong in the village. Well, I mean, we have the emergency, you know, dark yeah. landing area right across the river from the house there by the stick garage. But oh, yes, of course. Okay. Um, that is their spot that's designated yeah. for that purpose. Um, yeah. <clears throat> but you're talking like a private. Yeah. The private. So when I buy my, yep. when, I, when I, you know, hit the mega bucks and get my chopper, where do I? Park it. Right. Yeah. Okay. In Bethel. <laughs> <laughs> How about um, 
I don't even know if there's a place for it in the village at mineral extraction. Yep. Mm -hmm. Quarry. Mm -hmm. So well, we're I'm, talking I'm, the, the business res. I mean, the only place they'd extract anything would be down there in the fields that are behind the school. I mean, and, and that's only if somebody was able to somehow gravel extract them. I don't even know. If... Well, I have gravel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you're you're part of the bank. I would like to suggest that we use the the existing grid that we have. I this. like the grid. So yeah, so yeah. that so that we're actually in alphabetical order. For exactly. Sarah. Okay. Amusement parks, golf course. I find that that is weird that it's allowed. If you look at the map. Is well, actually, north of town, there's actually space to maybe to be able to do one. But south of the village, there isn't. And the only place that there, I mean, there is one in the place where we don't allow it. That's um, <laughs> right. So, uh, and the only other areas that are open enough even for such an enterprise are like in the hollows or maybe somewhere on Maple Hill or you know but that's all what that's all Conrad's area here but it's kind of a problem. So back to this chart so are people to assume if it's not on this chart it needs a conditional use is that how it's interpreted right now? This chart is structured by the old the old sort of structure so we would we would be revising this so that but i mean it, it says what is permitted and what isn't but i mean if it's not on this list are people to assume well, they that's, need a that's conditional a conversation use? we had earlier yeah right but, but right but right now right now what she's asking is what would we say specifically we're in, we we're, we're in business residential what right. would we say you right. can't do right. yet no, okay no golf course in the business but i mean they're already there blanks right like the amusement yeah. park is not Right. Yeah. Permitted. Camping is not permitted. I mean, we can go down through and it's already done for us to save time. You know what well, I mean? I don't think it was explicitly stated that anything that was not permitted or conditional use was prohibited. Oh. Um, so if that's the case, I'm happy to take those blanks and, and, and close them, them here. Just let me know. Because the ones that are blank, we obviously would not want in town. Um, Like camping area. Correct. I don't know. Might be able to dig something up good on the park. <laughs> Commercial recreation. I I guess I question that because we now have skate space. Skate, skate, skate space. space. I mean right. that's it's not commercial, but yeah, but, you're, but you're, is there a reason why we wouldn't want to have oh I don't know, um, yeah. uh, uh, you have to pay for cross country ski lessons. Well, we did at one time have a video arcade in the side of the Max grocery right. store. Or <laughs> roller skating back at the place. Right. Which, right. So we could put a. Need it. So I don't. Put permitted there. I, or conditional. Or conditional. Yeah. yeah, that shouldn't be blank. I'll agree with you, Sandy. I mean, do you go downtown in some towns to recreate that? Are. Different kind of recreation. Why don't we allow drive-in stands in the in the village? Mm. Oh no! Exactly the drive-in stand. Well, the credit union is one, <laughs> which is already here. <laughs> no, or would you be considering something like 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 what these dogs used to do? Is that a drive-in? Well, that stand? was just own its own but, little. I mean, that's yeah. a mobile, whatever. But it, you know, for, for, I mean, I think I think you're talking concept, like you want an A and W downtown. I think the concept is food. So um, no A and Ws. Right, but you're but, right. We already have one. But here. but this is but if if there was if we were going to have one, it should be in the village, shouldn't it? Yes. Mm -hmm. Not in the hollow. <laughs> yeah. Right. 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 why not go up? Catch a burger. Anyway, the North where line. we can't dilly dally tonight, we have a lot still on. The <laughs> yeah, this is a tough one. F f figuring out the exemptions is hard. Yeah, it is a tough one. I didn't know that was on our agenda tonight. So public utilities upstation, there's one in town. So already, kind of. I don't no, know that that's within your power to regulate either. I think that's. Oh. Potentially well, then why don't we just facility? Why don't we just not talk about it? 
take it off the we, list. Yeah, we, we not only have one, we have it in the floodplain. Well, that's yeah. what I mean. Happy, you'll be happy to. Oh, lovely. Yeah. 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 Like, yeah. Like communities all across America. Yep. <laughs> what? When they build it, where's, where's closest to the lines and where's an open space? Cool. Yeah. There you go. Mm -hmm. Skiers. So we have a skating rink. That one's blank. That's odd. Okay. So this is kind of outdated. Mm -hmm. Okay. Outdoor recreation touch. Yeah, that shouldn't be blank. Anyway. So manufacturing a processing. Um, um, oh, oh, light manufacturing. Jeez. Okay. okay. We have definitions that distinguish. Yeah, Unfortunately, what I've noticed is that the uses you have listed in your in your ordinance aren't defined. all defined. Oh, so we're going to have to figure that out as well. Yeah. So basically, what you have discovered is that is a mess, <laughs> <laughs> and, 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 and that's why you're here. <laughs> and we're very grateful. We only had it for three meetings. We were here for seventeen. I'm very grateful. Oh, <laughs> differentiation. Some, some groups take longer to do things. <laughs> all good. Oh boy. So um, what I've, so far I've heard um, maybe camping areas. Would anyone object to making that prohibited okay. in the village? In the village? Camping yeah. areas? I mean, sorry, in the um, uh, business residential. So what, what's Kennedy Drive? That wasn't? Um, it's, he, he's up the hill. He's in conservation. Conservation, OK. Gotcha. Well, I mean, if it's blank now, isn't that considered prohibited? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So that's yeah. That's blank fine. means yeah. prohibited. Yeah. These are blank. But I but I think that drive-in stand shouldn't be blank. Right. Me. I agree. That so do we have agreement that camping areas would be prohibited? Yeah. Correct. Threads? Okay. That's what's the next one down that someone objects to being in the village. You can look at the blank ones or anyone. We said drive-in stands should be okay in the village and the business residential. And, com and commercial rec. Uh, so we yes. were right here. And commercial rec. Mm -hmm. Manufacturing or processing establishments. Blank. So what does commercial rec entail? I mean, I rent bikes and people go out to, to ride. Yeah, I know, I we're, we're, be... saying, we're saying it's okay. Oh. It's we're saying okay. it's not the yeah, thing. Yeah, but you're <laughs> But right now, it was. Now, but, I mean, yeah, it's kind of under like, under the old rules. Like, like like if you turn the the warehouse into uh, so did we change that, Sandy? Then the, uh, uh, yes, the, okay. Laser yeah. tag. Uh, mm -hmm. so, so we have a community center in our business. Yes, that's that's mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So um, so I'm looking I'm looking at the blanks and trying to figure out if we want to keep the blanks. Um, I guess I guess heavy manufacturing, whatever that is, maybe shouldn't be in, in the village. village. It no. should be out in, on State Garage Road. So that's no. manufacturing or processing establishments. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, that's already blank. But I, you know, but we had AI in the village for a while. That was it, light manufacturing. That's right. right. Okay. Making lights. <laughs> <laughs> <Dude. laughs> okay, gravel extraction. No, right. We got that one. We got that one. Yeah. Uh, mobile home parks. Prohibited. I don't motel motor lodges. I don't I have strong feelings about that. You do or don't. I, I'm saying I don't have strong feelings. No, I, I, I think you know, if it's lodging, you want a motel, you want it in town. Yeah, if we were going to have one, it should be here. Yeah. Might be so that shouldn't be prohibited. Sorry. So I got mineral and gravel extraction. What did you say about mobile home parks? Uh, 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 not prohibited. Not prohibited. Okay. And motel motor lodges are not prohibited. I'm sorry. Mobile home park and mobile home parks. Yes. Yes. Prohibited. Oh. Yeah. I miss. I misspoke. I was. Okay. All right. Um, yeah. Motels. Not in the village. Yes, no. Motels? Okay, okay, how do you define that? In. Uh, in. Uh, hostel. I, if, if, I don't see any reason to prohibit it. I think okay. I'm not sure it. anybody's going to find a straight place for it, but I, yeah. I don't I think it would be probably would be better. It would be better for the town of the Allowed. Yeah. Well, he um, keeps the bodies Corey, down. Corey there. prohibited. I'm sorry, I got that. Yeah. Yep. Uh, can we go back to mobile home parks? Why would we yeah. prohibit? 
Those in the in the village. In the village. In the village. Yeah. In the business place. No. Yeah. Although Bethel's is in the village. Yep. Yeah. I mean, just living. I really don't think there's a space for it, but I, I don't yeah, think there's right. a space for it. Yeah. I think that's the. But we shouldn't prohibit it. First okay. Preference, I guess. But. I give. Are you in agreement, Dan? Don't prohibit yeah. it. Yeah. Right. Okay. Exactly. Ski, I don't see area any Ski area marina. I'd love to see a beach. In the <laughs> <laughs> and a marina. And a ski jump. With a bowling alley. So but on At that one, we have jump. a skating rink. So yes, those are all very different things. We should probably yeah. break that down. <laughs> yeah, that's a marina and a beach. We don't even live near water. Um <laughs> says who? I'm a lot nearer water than I used to be. Well, the ski area can refer to Nordic skiing as well. Yeah. So cro cross country skiing. Yeah, yeah well, why wouldn't we I, want I that think, on the I think we're not just, in the village. Right? I think all of those are permitted. Or, or not prohibited. Just not yeah. Prohibited. Yep. Okay. I agree. Right. Yeah. And the same yeah. with outdoor yeah. recreation at the bottom. Good yeah. Going out yeah. Yeah. Not prohibited. Well, um, Wildlife refuge. Two lanes. Yeah, I don't understand that. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I, Dan, are you going to have a wildlife refuge on your no, property? Yeah, I'm not. Um, probably, <laughs> probably not. It might be wildlife, but I don't think it'll be a <laughs> refuge. Um, Luckily, the next one is all. I think it's a stretch to have that in the village. However, there may be some unique ecological feature well, along the White River or something that somebody might well, propose as a refuge. Again, Why, not? Why are those two clumped together? Because outdoor recreation does work with the skate space. I mean, you know. Because we ran out of lines on the page, Julie. That's why. <laughs> so it does look like that. It does. <laughs> We're conserving words. Oh, okay, we so cannot was... digress people. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, we can. So, so what I've got here for the following uses are prohibited in the business residential district is slaughterhouse, helicopter landing pad for private residential use, quarries, mineral and gravel extraction, amusement park, golf course, camping areas, manufacturing or processing establishments, and that's heavy manufacturing, which I need to make sure is actually defined. Mm, yeah. Good point. Looks like a good list to me. Okay. Great. Um, why is a helicopter only for private residents? I don't. We were trying to distinguish it from the hospitals, from the DART. Oh, but the, but that's not here. It's not, not in, in the, the. It's not in the village. No, no, it's it's uh, it's in the the, 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 the commons or whatever. It's, it's it's over it's over in the. In the actually, actually, it's, is there the snake ranch, right? Yeah. yeah. Is it possible that someday it might need to move to the business process? Business I mean, business I think district. whoever was involved in that decision making process selected that because of the open area necessary. Mm -hmm. the, yeah. yeah, I think yeah. I think it's inappropriate. Yeah. Okay. okay, so we'll just say a helicopter landing pad. Period is prohibited. And it is I mean, because of power lines and other things. Okay, everybody, note that uh, in commercial ag, there is nothing prohibited. Right. Correct. So we move on to the next one. <laughs> well, um, so, um, folks, I want to do a time check. Um, yeah. And check in with Sarah on her. Did you know that we have that we have guests who've arrived? Yes. Um, I see a phone number and I see um, Robert. Are there others? Uh, um, uh, Janine Weir and Bruce Marshall are in the room. Oh, in the room. Okay. So we want to um, see how much time um, Sarah has remaining. Um, we generally like to um, finish up around eight o'clock, but um, we have some guests that we want to hear from. And mm -hmm. Um, Sarah, what's your sense and how much more time do you want to put to this? She's not in, not in breath because she I gave have us cookies. Cookies. <laughs> I have cookies. Um, so I, I want to respect y'all's time limits. Um, we did not get through even the minimum stuff that we were supposed to get through today. Um, there's a lot of stuff for the, the planning commission to think about and deliberate. So I'm trying to think about the best way for us to move forward schedule wise. Um, obviously my time is fairly limited by the budget that we have together. Um, in terms of like an actual contract stop 
time. Um, the this this work that I'm doing with y'all is being paid for by two separate grants. One is a separate contract with the town to do this sort of general health and wellness, you know, uh, tune up on your bylaw, and then the other is very housing specific content. Um, Technically, our general tune-up contract ends February, the end of February 28th, um, 2023, um, which we can extend. There's no you know, higher power that's telling us we have to end in February. Um, the housing stuff, we could stretch into, we had originally in our office, we have a whole bunch of towns that were working with on housing stuff. Um, we were trying to get folks wrapped up by spring, but it looks like some of our towns are going to stretch into the summer. And if Rochester needs to be one of those, that's okay. Um, we're not under the gun from the state to get it done by May, right? So we have some flexibility. However, my time is limited. Um, and so I'm trying to think about ways that we can move forward. And I'm wondering if the planning commission would be amenable to like meeting and discussing on your own. I can send you the prompts, right? Just like I did for this meeting where I'm like, I need your decisions on X, Y, Z. You could meet on your own, come up with your decision, send it back to me, and then I can work on it remotely. And then obviously Better I would meet with you again. Yes. Right, yes. But just to minimize the amount of like FaceTime that I'm charging you for, right. yeah. And try Tried cookie time. bribes. I know, thank you. I would yeah. agree with what she just said because Obviously, her time is very valuable to us. So, yeah. but if we could be more organized for her, I would. So I was I was very impressed with the drafts that Sarah gave us of things today. Um, I guess we're having more trouble with these things that are a little bit more open ended, Even like mm -hmm. um, like these lists. Um, but I wouldn't mind having some suggestions in that regard that we could look at. I mean, it's, it, you know, prompting, yeah, I mean, the you know, worry, but it was yeah, so, you know, I mean, we don't have to go with 12 pages from Pompey, yeah. but right. I mean, you've worked on other towns, mm -hmm. um, you know, you could say this is, this is what most, most towns do. And we could say, no, not, not for us or, mm -hmm or we had this other idea, but but I find it very useful to have a it, draft to work with. Me too. Oh, yeah. Yeah, too. Okay. Mm -hmm. You have a, an incredible wealth of knowledge, which is, I, it just feels like we're doing good work with you here too. And Well, yeah, with her here, but in the meantime, it's in the not meantime, a possibility. But yeah, no, I, I like your idea, mm -hmm. but okay. yeah. So maybe what we could do is, I'm wondering if like, for January, um, well, I should stop. So what is the town's expectation for when you want to get this all done and wrapped up? Are you up against a deadline? No, no. no. Okay. We just don't want to drag it out for another four years that we've already been dragging. <laughs> so, okay. so I'm wondering for the January meeting, what if I tee up um, another track changes document with a topics and questions for discussion guide um, that will walk you through what I need your decisions on. Um, and then you can get as far as you can in your meeting. Um, and then somebody can report back to me, either Maya, somebody can send me the minutes, right? And I can work with that. And then I can be in contact with Dan um, and with Sandy about like whether I show up to the February meeting or whether we do another iteration of that, what do you think? That sounds good. Me too. Yeah, okay. yeah. that sounds like yeah. a good good plan to have our arguments amongst ourselves about things, and then right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. And right. would you be amenable to this, um for for certain things? Maybe just putting in like a comment saying other towns have done. Blank, or mm -hmm. this is what other towns have done, and here's this is my so, so we have some of them already in yeah. the comments. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so I found, I found the comments very helpful just, in that regard. Yeah, just yeah. So yeah, what I did notes. for yeah. this particular meeting is in the sort of like topics and questions guide, I said, okay, um, 
here's what I need you to make some decisions on. And I've, I've attached to this email examples from XYZ towns. And then I made little folders and I grouped like example regulations. Yeah. Was that helpful? Yes. To folks? I did it all. So my homework is done. <laughs> yeah, and I couldn't, and I couldn't <laughs> open it. So, Were you so. able to open the PDF? Uh, I finally it could, but it was late in the day. Yeah, okay. Yeah. okay. So. So that's what I'll do again for when we're when we're talking about various issues, um, and I will try to get you. So when your next meeting, I believe, is what January second, uh, the third. January third. They've got it on the computer. Oh, Yes, January 3. Okay. When would you like me to get you the packet of information before the meeting? Christmas? Yeah, for Christmas under the tree. <laughs> sure. Okay. And candy canes. Although it is the holiday season, you may not have time to do yeah, it. I mean, I mean it's um, I'm gonna I'm gonna be taking off starting on the 21st. Um, so I'll just pedal to the middle with between now and then, and I'll get you a draft to work with mm -hmm. um, and it won't be finalized. It won't be like the final draft, but it'll just have no, a bunch I of mean, stuff that you make you know, decisions on and work on. Right? Your suggested wording, whatever else you write. So, you know, I mean, the yeah. tiniest of tweaks. You know. Have you seen towns that are worse, more jumbled than ours? Um, conference, you know, you know, conference, <laughs> conference bylaw, <laughs> conference bylaw before we worked on it, had last been substantially revised in, I believe, 1973. Okay. It was highly illegal oh. in almost every regard. Okay. So, you know so what? Like, like everybody's coming from a different place, right? right. Yeah. <laughs> We're just doing the best we can. And now look at their bylaws. Right. Good to go. Okay. So, yeah. 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 Okay. Right. so you <laughs> say. <laughs> Anyway, let's get another thinking. 40 years. We'll be right up to speed. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, right, the new start. board will be. <laughs> All right, it sounds like we have a plan to move forward. Yep. Yeah. Thank Sarah, you, Sarah, is there for your flexibility. That you need from us tonight? Thank you, Dan, for retracting this. Um, I don't believe there's anything else. Let me just check. I had, I had made myself a note. Um, Can I just ask you a quick organizational question, which will impact how the document is structured? Sure, sure. Um, so right now, the way that your, your ordinance is structured is that your standards that are applied to various kinds of uses are a bit jumbled. They're sort of mixed throughout the document and, and logically there's not a great flow there. What I'd like to propose is the, the structure that we use for all the ordinances that we will come with towns where your general standards apply to all development. Even the exemptions have to make sure that they are meeting the general standards, right? Um, your special standards, that's a term that applies to specific uses. So in that section, you would have things like the language pertaining to travel trailers or the language pertaining to quarries, right? Something that's specific to a use. Um, and then the conditional use standards is just for the conditional use review process. And it is for all types of uses that go through the conditional use process. So it's not, you're not gonna have a conditional use standard that is specific to a quarry, for example, because that's already covered under your special standards that will have been part of the process, but your conditional use standards are sort of general standards that will apply to every use that gets run through that process. How does that sound? Yes. Yes, please. Okay. Streamlining something? <laughs> Good yeah. Lord. You you okay. said that in your, in your standard yeah. right? And yeah. I emphatically will agree. <laughs> okay. Awesome. Uh, Thank you. That's really helpful direction for me. Um, so with that, I will I will see you before. Um, thank you so much, Dan. Um, will you let me be post again? Yes, absolutely. Yep. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you very much. Thank you, Sarah. Yes. Yes, yes okay. thank you. Wow. Great work, Sarah. Yes, very good work. I think you are the, your host. Your host again. Am I host? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, well, Sarah's um, packing up. We'll we'll move on to our um, public comment <clears throat> part of our meeting. And we do have some guests 
So um, if any of our guests would like to um, share their thoughts, um, please. Uh, Up to the mic. Uh, first, I have a question. Um, so my question is, can you hear me? Yeah. Um, Excuse me, Dan. Dan, it's Robert Franks up at Hooper Hollow. Yeah, Robert. Uh, I've been listening. Yeah, I, I would like to just um, share my questions. And the first question is, can we synchronize our time because of the three minute compression. Yeah, start now. Go. I'll let you know when you have 30 seconds. Well, no. What time is it? I have my stopwatch going um, and on my computer it's 8.05. <laughs> I got 8.06. Okay. So let's roll. Well, first of all, Dan, I want to thank you for your polite and timely uh, responses. Also finding and sharing the uh, statute that gives you the authority to compress uh, public uh, the planning and zoning board meeting from five to three minutes. Uh, our dialogue over the last three days might have been uh, a little bit aggravated, but we got to a conclusion. And I would recommend to all the boards that if they're going to introduce a compression of the public's comments, they should reflect the statute that gives them the authority to do so. Uh, with regards to retroactive minutes, this is a surprising thing. Um, I, I just want everyone to realize this. I looked at, I looked at the minutes for the uh, Planning and Zoning Board meeting. The minutes of August, September, October, and November were not present. So my question is, and I'm just going to ask questions. This evening, you guys um, wholesaled the approval of minutes from the August meeting, September meeting, October meeting, and November meeting. I don't believe that anyone remembers the minutes that were presented in August that should be approved. The, uh, I'm moving onward. I also want to ask with regards to Brella, uh, the umbrella of the Rochester reuse is the planning and zoning board very familiar with the last select board and what was decided. You don't have to answer. And is this evening, who is taking the minutes? Um, I think that was your first question, Robert, as I uh, understand you. Um, uh, Maya is taking the minutes. She is our new clerk. She is a town employee okay. and is going to be taking our, our minutes. Um, and if you miss the early part of the meeting, she'll have the minutes to Sandy. Um, and Sandy will have them to the town clerk for posting by the end of the week. So we're endeavoring to hit that five-day mark. Well, I think, that, I think that is a great accomplishment for the town because there are people's lives and property owners that are retroactively looking for the minutes that may have happened in August. And you guys tonight wholesaled the approval of the minutes for f basically four months. Uh, that it, Maya should know that's not acceptable. Uh, so, uh, also, I wanted to say something. Uh, uh, hello. Also, I wanted to say to Sarah before she packed up and left, if Rand McNally was still alive, uh, Sarah would be the executive cart uh, executive senior director of cartography. She's a very impressive woman. Now, I brought this up last meeting with regards to my census in 2010 uh, with regards to the Fisk properties. Everything that was discussed tonight, what I've gleaned, it's been 12, 12 years. Everything that Sarah brought up and the concerns that the board brought up are actually present at the Fisk properties. And I don't understand how 40 years of the lack of planning and zoning is basically dismissed from the planning and zoning board. I mean, we're we, you were talking about fences tonight. Well, take a ride up and watch everyone build their fences and have dog fights with the state police uh, trying to, to uh, separate
separate the neighbors, I mean, this is a serious issue because the Fisk Road is part of the town of Rochester. And I don't hey, Robert, understand why the- Robert, you're gonna have to wrap it up. You're gonna have to wrap it okay. up. Okay, so, so okay. Fisk Road- So how much, how much time do I have? Um, you used your three minutes and a little bit more. Okay, uh, the last thing I wanna say is with regards to mineral rights, there's a good chance through the valley, up here at Hooper Hollow, guess who owns the mineral rights to the Talc, Talcville and everyone else? Take a guess. No idea. UVM. They bought the mineral rights for this whole whole valley back in 19, in the 40s. So I think, I don't mm -hmm. think you guys should be worried about mineral rights along the White River. UVM owns them, and you can research it and find it. But um, you know, again, I, I do thank uh, I do thank you guys for listening, and maybe the next meeting you guys can answer my question. Okay. Thank you so much, and God bless Rochester. <laughs> Thanks, Robert. Thanks for um, making it succinct. Appreciate that. Um, um, and we have uh, visitors in the room that I can't see. I can't quite see on the owl. Um, Why don't you come closer? Yeah. First, we have a question. So oh. we just found out recently that um, you're looking to change. Well, excuse me. We, we need you to say your name, please. Your name, Bruce Marshall. Bruce Marshall. So we just found out recently you're looking to change your bylaws and we talked to um, an architect who's working with us on the issue with Lightning Hall and he assured us that the normal pattern is that um, bylaws are strengthened over time, not weakened. And I just wanted assurance from all of you that nothing is going to be weakened um, to facilitate Lightning Hall's fraud. So okay. that's- Excuse me for 20, a minute. Maya has a question. Well, go ahead, Maya. You have a question? Yeah, sorry. I didn't get the speaker's name. You better put your hand down. Okay. Um, Janine, can you spell your name for Maya, please? Uh, J E A N I N E. W and your last name? W E I R. And Bruce? Marshall, M A R S H A L L. Bruce, B R U C E. Okay. Good. Thanks, Maya. Go ahead, so we're just, we just are wanting an assurance that nothing is going to be passed to um, 20 years after Lyman Hall effectuated their fraud of 2003 that they get a little shoe in and it gets rubber stamped because, you know, it's not like that would hold up in a court of law, um, but it's still profoundly upsetting because there's, you know, ongoing use violations that they're engaging with um, in so many ways. and. You know, your proposed minutes, and I'd like an answer to that question because, you know, the, the even though in 2003, um, your requirements for duplexes didn't exist, since this has been an ongoing use, there's been ongoing use violations when your um, requirements for duplexes went into the, the um, local zoning you know, for the requirement for a firewall. I mean, there's obviously there's state of Vermont regulations that were there for 2003 with um, the Department of Fire Safety that became, you know, the law for all of Vermont. Um, but in terms of the local zoning for duplexes, um, I, we just want assurance that that's not gonna be slightly removed when the bylaws are changed because we've just felt really honestly um, mistreated by the planning board and in so many ways by the legal system for so long and we just need to stand. So in terms of your proposed minutes and we do want an answer even if you don't want to give us an answer tonight we need an answer to that in terms of your proposed minutes. Um, but there needs to be, we have checked that this is so late and we have questions about why. Um, if there's just like honestly, 
Janine, you have about a minute left in your in your time. So well, I, I have sat for you know. three minutes, and just we're dealing well, with we're, what we're saying is Bruce can continue. But you know, we've come to you and we've said this is fraud. It's not just we've said there's violations of zoning. We said there's violations of state law, federal law. Um, there's a lot of violations here that are intentional, um, intentionally effectuated with center. This is not like bumbling people who just didn't know what they were doing. <laughs> they knew exactly, and they still know exactly what they're doing. And there's, we have done a lot of what you wrote here. Um, this is for A2. This, this was for A2 and 9-6. And it's just, a lot of this is not accurate. There needs to be some, some more honesty. If you're gonna say that um, the planning board said that you don't have jurisdiction, you need to say that we disagreed, that you do have jurisdiction. And you also need to say honestly what you said in these two planning board meetings, why you said you don't have jurisdiction, because you said all the land is Lyman Halls. Um, you said it's not a subdivision, and you said that private roads. Um, so you need to write those things. You need to not just say, oh, we said it's inaccurate. We didn't just say it's inaccurate. We said this is major fraud. And we've been really hurt, and a lot of homeowners at Corey Hill have been really hurt. And as Sheila Braun spoke to you about um, last fall of 2021, you know, a lot of people at Corey Hill have been very hurt. You're talking about two and a half years. They had renters in the farmhouse without hot water. I mean, we have just really had it with the level of abuse and vampirism from Lemon Hall, and we need the plat gone. And yes, we said we'd give you the letter, but per Vermont law, you know, you've been, you've received oral notice. And we'll finish our letter for you. But, you know, I've had chronic Lyme disease. This has been really brutal what Lyme and Paul's put us through. I've been really sick. We have a million things to deal with. So the letter is going to take a little longer. But you need to understand, you know, the kind of things you wrote here. It's just written in a very um, not, not honest way. It's not our plat map. We didn't, we have nothing to do with that plat map. That's Lyme and Hell's plat map. Um, so, you know, we'll get the letter together, but there needs to be some honest dealing with what's gone on here. Um, because Thank we you, basically been, we've been indentured servants to Lyman Hall since mm -hmm. they sued us in 2019, and we've had enough. So, Janine, yeah, uh, I think your time, Dan is saying that your time is, is not over. If Bruce would like to speak, then you may have three minutes. Uh, I don't know what to say other than um, Robert Franks did call and uh, said something here. There was an incident recently over the plat map uh, where the, call, the police were called um, and we were brought there by our neighbor because she felt uh, physically unsafe there by the behavior of Brian McFarland, president of Lyman Hall Incorporated. Uh, who was, um, and there's been other incidences of things. This had to do with a fence and her putting up a horse fence and issues about what's property, what's real. Nothing went through with that, that uh, plot now. And it's serving as, as, as an instrument, as we said, of fraud. Um, and uh, they had taken us to court, of course, and they did not get their summary judgment. They haven't pled their their things right, and they had a lot of problems here. And uh, so, um, yeah, uh, we like seeing the process here. And uh, but I think it's difficult when we don't feel like uh, we're getting some understanding about some of our concerns. So I have to say. Thank you, Bruce. All right, thank you, Bruce, and thank you, Janine. Um, the, the letter will be critical to us. We're going to, I mean, you, you've talked a lot of um, legalese and we're going to need that letter to understand um, your points and to engage our town attorney in this. Um, I don't have the Who skill and knowledge to. Who is uh, your town attorney? I don't know. You don't know? Oh, that's um, interesting. Who is it? He doesn't know because he doesn't have to deal with them very often. It's, yeah. um, we have, um, depends for what purpose, if we're in a suit, then we have to engage someone different because uh, 
yeah. the town yeah. attorney is not a, a, a trial attorney. Right. Sure. And I'm, um, what is his name? Um, luckily we don't have to talk with him very much. Um, so Vermont Gov Law is his email, Jim Barlow. Oh, okay. Jim Barlow is his name. Yeah. Just to just to understand that you're that's how we're talking because um, yeah. I don't know if we have any trust because we don't have trust in attorneys, but that's another question. I think we'll go. Hey, thank you. All right. Um, let me just uh, do a quick um, check in with Maya. How that um, how that went, Maya, for you, and um, anything we can do or help you with as you as you do this. How did it, how did it work out for you tonight? Um, I think it went pretty well. There were just a couple of things that I wasn't quite clear mm -hmm. on, um, but I will check in with Sandy about that. I think yeah. everything's pretty good. Um, I did have one question about, um, so I know I'm supposed to record the names of anyone who speaks. Um, there is someone who, who was not identified who's been putting messages on the chat. Um, it's just listed as resident. It, do I need that person's name if they are um, messaging via the chat? Um, no, I, I see the chat. I'm not able to respond to the chat and um, and also um, chair the meeting. So I'm not going to use the chat as a um, a way to do a okay. um, discussion. Um, I see that Robert has asked some questions in there, and I can respond to Robert later about those. Um, I, I've responded to him on, on some of those already, so I'll, I'll take care of that. Uh, it's just not an effective use when people start using the chat and also start are, are also communicating um, in the Zoom. Um, it's just it's like having two conversations at once. Right. Gotcha. Thank you. Yep. Thank you uh, so much, Maya. Yeah. Thank yeah, you. Maya, I appreciate it. Yeah. My, really My pleasure. Any um, other any other topics from the um, from the um, Sarah has something. Sorry, just one one note to add. Um, so I at the beginning of the meeting, I talked about the uh, the use of a legal trail issue. I just wanted to throw in the caveat, which I'm always supposed to say is that we're not lawyers, right? So our office, we are not attorneys in our office. That's just our reading of statute um, and the collective wisdom of the planners in our office. And that's the best we came up with. So for what it's worth, we hope it's helpful. <laughs> Neither are we, but we're expected to be. <laughs> anyway, um, David had his hand, hand in the air, Mr. Chair. I just had a question about, I, let's go back. Just had our highway rebuilt up through, and the state has requested of me an easement on my property to cover the area of the culvert for future repair or maintenance and whatever. Um, my curiosity being, our setback rules and whether our interpretation of them and whether my wellhead being relatively close to that area they wish to acquire, uh, does that become a problem to anyone, uh, either myself or them in the process? The setback of your wellhead? You know, excuse me, if you take the they just want to take this 400 square feet or whatever it is, rectangular piece that basically incorporates the culvert and however much room they decide they need on either side. That edge boundary of that proposed easement, uh, permanent easement, is, you know, does there need to be another 25 feet beyond that to get to the wellhead or what, you know, okay. what I'm saying? So, so. Dave, if if it's if it's an easement, you continue to own the property and it does not change your property line. Yes, they want a permanent easement. Yep, yeah, but that's not. And so that doesn't that's, become that's, a new boundary. That's that not doesn't a new become boundary. so. No. There's no, it's permanent. no it's setback issue. It's become. a permanent right to, to cross, but you continue. You will continue to pay the taxes for that piece. Mm, yeah, they might. I was just curious whether that had any impact 
on you know the the, loca the location of the well had any impact on where that line was drawn. I I, I think you may have a safety issue with. I mean, is is are they are they going to have gravel and stuff that's so close that it's going to? I mean, that's a different issue. I mean, yeah, that's, it's, it's but hard, that's not the of this room, maybe. But you know, but you know. But the, there's no in, that wouldn't create any kind of an impingement on. It doesn't. The it doesn't change your boundary line. Right. Okay. Curious. I mean, I do not wish to have a permanent easement on my property for any reason, or to have that encumbrance on the deed or the title, because they will have to change all of that. Correct. To reflect the 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 easement. Uh, 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 there will be a a deed from you to them giving them a right to cross right which would have to then create new paperwork and new it, it's it's it that's that is the paperwork oh okay yeah not that i wish to have it happen but just so that i know what the details of it are so i've always given them access you, freely. Do you have more stuff good night sarah yeah, she has more stuff okay go okay thanks oh, I, um I, Sandy, I see another block on the um, on the participant says resident. Is that someone new? I don't know who I don't know who that is. This is our public um, comment period. If resident has uh, anything they wanted to share, this would be the time to do it. Uh, the public is left. Oh, there's one. One hanging. We don't know. Oh. All right, so um, we have our marching orders from Sarah. So that means some some homework um, and around the holidays. Uh, really critical that folks take a close look at that and, and be able to have conversations about that in January. And um, when we get to these topics like the exemptions and creating lists, it's really tedious and slow work. So <laughs> we uh, got to do our homework and be ready for it. <clears throat> I'm going to be uh, intend to be back in Vermont for uh, the January 3rd meeting, which um, help, is helpful for me. Bye, Sarah. Thank you. Thank, thank you very much. You said you will be back for the January one, Dan? I intend to, yes. Yeah. So if there's nothing else, I'll make a motion to adjourn unless we're not done yet. No, nope, um, we're done. I, I, I need to. I need to just mention that we received um, today the um, the formal forty five day notice on the um, microgrid project for Brandon Mountain um, that's up by on property that Mike Bowen has um, the North Hollow Farm. So if we think think the old gravel pit on Sudbury yeah, yeah. um, and th this is to um, create a Rochester resiliency zone. So we'll have a chance to review this maybe next month. Okay. Just your resiliency zone. Now I'll make a motion to adjourn unless we have something else. Second. All right. All right. All in favor. All right. Uh, we'll Thanks for your work on the, on the zoning. <laughs>